Hello, welcome to Veterans Remember. I'm Dick Gooding, I'm your host for Veterans Remember, which we uh, give an opportunity for Hopkins and veterans to talk a little bit about their experiences, and many of them uh, have had experiences during wartime, and uh, others have not, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to keep uh, a very accurate record of information and uh, a bit of a historical viewpoint so that residents and kids in Hopkinton uh, can have the opportunity to see the experiences of the veterans. Today joining me is Morgan Malloy. Morgan has been in Hopkinton for well over 40 years and uh, is a veteran and uh, had uh, asked if he could jo join us today and tell a little bit about his experiences. Morgan, uh, welcome to Veterans Remember. Thank you very much. We're very glad to have you here today. And, I'm glad uh, to be here. And uh, we're, we're delighted to be able to talk with you about uh, your experiences. First of all, why don't you tell us about uh, where you grew up? Because I understand you didn't grow up as a young kid in Hopkinton, but uh, uh, tell us about a little bit about your early years. I was born in Maine in 1924. I went to school there, I played athletes, and of course I peddled papers, and I had odd jobs in town. Yeah. And uh, being a mill town was kind of tough getting up. But uh, we managed, and we had a good time. And uh, I worked in the Maine Mill over there for a short period of time. Oh, is that I went, right? Before I yeah. went into the service, yeah. Now, uh, you went into the service pretty, pretty closely after you graduated from high school, is that About right? About six, seven months, yes. Six or seven months, right. and uh, were you drafted? Or, uh? Well, I was drafted, yes. At the time, uh, President Roosevelt had shut off all enlistments. Yeah. And uh, a bunch of us at a certain age, we had already registered for the draft. We went down, we told them we wanted to go, so they took us. They did, and, yeah. and uh, they're happy to get us. And and, and did you uh, go into uh, at Fort Devens? Were you? Uh, I was mustered in there. And was inducted into Fort Devens, yes. Mm -hmm. And we got there, and uh, of course we went through a series of uh, exams, and uh, they had four branches of the service there, and if you had passed certain tests, you were invited to join which one you wanted. I had a good friend of mine went into the Marine Corps and uh, several other people that I knew went into the Army. And I happened to go into the Air Corps. And, and the, the Air Corps at that time was under the Army, Army is correct. that correct? That's right. A lot, of the, a lot of us youngsters, and I'll put myself into that grouping because I wasn't around during World War II, but uh, uh, didn't realize that the, uh, that the Air Corps was really an Army unit. Uh, That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and, and what made you uh, decide to go into the Air Corps as opposed to being a ground pounder in the uh, Army? I didn't want to walk. I can understand <laughs> that. I can relate to that. Uh, I don't know. It was an opportunity for me to expand myself, really. So I just thought I'd just like to go into the Air Corps because mm -hmm. it seemed more glamorous, I guess. I don't know. but. Uh, Sure. I wanted to fly. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Now, uh, where did you take your basic training? We went to Miami Beach, Florida. And, Gee, that's uh, tough duty. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a lot of marching down there. It yeah. wasn't that easy. It was nice being there. The weather was warm, of course. And uh, we did a lot of marching. We marched on a lot of golf courses down there. <laughs> we slept in some of the nicest hotels down oh, there. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> But uh, I was there for about uh, six weeks. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went to Colorado to go armament school. And uh, after armament school, after I graduated, they shipped us off to different areas. Most of them went to uh, uh, depots, you know, where they, uh, a whole bunch of them would go there, and then they get si assigned to different outfits. Was the armament class that you went to was still related to, to Air, Air Corps? Oh, though, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's for it was the, Air Corps armament. That's what yeah, it was. I see. We were told how to, taught how to take uh, machine guns apart and put mm -hmm. together and taught, taught, taught us all about turrets, how to operate turrets. Mm -hmm. and, did uh, from did there, you have any idea at that point in time what your uh, work assignment might be on an airplane? Or, no, or, this, no. or this is just this giving is, everybody uh, the basic information? That's, that's correct, yeah. I see. Yeah. And uh, from Colorado, where did, you, where did you go? From Colorado, I went to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I went to assigned to a squadron in Tennessee. And uh, I had an operation down there for hernia. And they shipped me back to Massachusetts on 21-day furlough. 
And uh, while I was home for about a week, they called me back and said that I was being shipped out. I thought I was going overseas at right. the time, but yeah. actually they were just shipping to me to another state. <laughs> I went to Tennessee, and uh, I was stationed in Tennessee for about about four or five weeks, and um, tra a paratrooper squadron came in and landed at our airstrip, and we had an opportunity to go up if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went up in a C-47, and I liked it, liked it so much that I figured I'm going to join the paratroopers. So I had already signed up for gunnery school, and I signed up for paratroop school also. Fortunately, gunnery school came up first, so I took that. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Uh, uh, did, 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 uh, at, at this point in time, were you flying in, in, in airplanes on a regular basis? Or no. Was it still, no. this was all ground training? That's correct, and, yeah. And school uh, Actually, classroom. I didn't fly in anything until I got down to gunnery school in Fort Myers, Florida. And that's when we started to uh, do a lot of ground stuff, sh how to shoot and ride in the back of a truck, shooting tr skeet. And, uh, shooting skeet out of the back of a truck? Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we finally went up on a, a Hudson bomber. Which I think it was a Canadian bomber. Mm -hmm. And they could fit a whole bunch of people in it, so they took maybe eight or ten people up at once. And... Uh, we shot at targets, and uh, they had told us before we had started ground school that 50% uh, of the people would not graduate. They would not get their wings. Really? Yeah. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to get my wings, you know, and I was happy to get it. Sure. Yeah. Now, this is, this is what, 1943? 1943, uh, right. In right. that time frame? Right. right. So uh, uh, where was your next assignment after? After that, I got assigned to Columbia, South Carolina. That's mm -hmm. when I joined the crew, my first crew. And uh, I went into B-25s right away. Now, this, uh, uh, a B-25, uh, as I understand it, there were a number of different models. Uh, how many uh, crew members were in the B-25s? Well, the first models only had about four or five. Mm -hmm. The second model, as they grew up to J, they had six. Mm -hmm. They had a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, a radio man, an engineer, and a tail gunner. Now, did, uh, and, and your, your job was a tail gunner, as I That's understand correct. it. Yeah. Now, do you learn the, the jo other people's jobs as well in uh, case uh, you have to fill in for somebody? And uh, well, uh, the only job actually we uh, learned other than our own was uh, perhaps flying the airplane. The mm -hmm. pilot gave every, each crew member an opportunity to fly the plane. Which was quite exciting. I'm sure it <laughs> yeah, is. It really was. You used to be in a tail we gunner. And we weren't there very long, you know, doing things like that. But yeah. uh, he did let us do it. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, okay, so then, uh, then where did you? From so there, at this we point, went to you're, just, you're just learning your trade. That's correct. And there's no specific unit that you were attending, uh, going to at that particular point. No, in time. we just put part of a crew, mm -hmm. learning different. Uh, different jobs in our own airplane, what we would do, and things like that. Mm -hmm. We. Uh, we had to fly at night missions, like going down to Lake Charles, Louisiana, and we came back again, and cross-country missions, low-level missions. It was just a bunch of learning. That's all I learned. Sure. Now, did, did this crew stay together? The, the We stayed together until we got overseas, and then they broke our crew up. And this is, we went down to the Gilbert Islands. They broke our crew up. And they took the pilot, and they made him a co-pilot, the first mission I was on. And uh, they kept the other four members, four or five members together. And uh, we flew our first mission down in uh, Nauru, a little island off right down near the equator. Now, you didn't go straight uh, over to the, the, the Gil what is it, the, Gil the Gilbert Gilberts? Island, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you go to Hawaii first? Oh, I'm, or, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I was just sort of we, tracking you across. Yeah. The, we went to Hawaii, and we stayed there for a while. Still always learning mm -hmm. to be part of a crew together, how to work together. Because that was the whole idea of the Air Corps anyway, is people helping out people. Right. And uh, uh, we, we were at a place called Kahuku. It was a, a training place for a crew member, B-25 crew this member. This is in Hawaii? That's in Hawaii, yeah. yeah. Northern part of Hawaii. I see. And from there, we were shipped down to the Gilbert Islands. Now, we is this a, actually, we were a replacement crew. A replacement crew? Right. Within, a, within an air squadron within a, within or whatever group. the terminology is? Yeah. 
Yeah, within a group. Within a group. And what and what group was this? A twentieth. I'm sorry, the 41st Bomb Group. The 41st Bomb Group. Right. Okay, and they were they were a fairly new unit, isn't that they correct? They were, yes. Yeah. So that was formed like in 42 or 43? Uh, they actually formed uh, earlier than that in Virginia. They started out in Virginia, yeah. Hmm. And and how many how many planes are we talking about approximately in a bomb group? In a bomb group, well, there's 16 planes used to go out on a mission, 16 times 4. Okay, so that's uh, 64? Yeah. Okay. And that's, uh, uh, and these are all roughly, are these all uh, B-25s? All B-25s, other, yeah. yeah. Other, other planes within the group, too? No, just no? B-25s. Now, what were your missions as you were down in the Gilberts? Uh, what, were, what were the missions that you well, typically Well, different went squadrons on? went to different islands. We, mm -hmm. we bombed mostly in Nauru. That's down in the Gil, down in, right down near the equator. Others went to Tarawa. Some went to Woji, other went to uh, Funafuti, different places like that. And uh, and and your primary role was was bombing. That's correct. And uh, are we talking about 500 pound bombs, or, or are we talking about? Uh, well, our bomb bay wasn't that great. We could carry maybe two 500 pound bombs. That's about all. Mm -hmm. well, it's a small airplane, really. Sure. Yeah, it, what is it called? It's a medium, called a medium, medium range? It's a medium, medium bomber. bomber. Right. And, and what, were the, what, what are the big ones? B-24s. B B-17s. B B B-17s, yeah. We had a, I think Chuck Zedek, uh, I don't know if you remember Chuck Zedek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie flew, I think he was, or he was a... 17s, I think. Yeah, B-17s yeah. over in Europe. Yeah. Now, uh, when you were down in the Gilberts and the, the, some of the islands that you mentioned, Tarawa, uh, you know, those were pretty. There was some pretty bad stuff going on there. Did you? Well, did you experience much? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> not a heck of a lot. But they did have some pretty accurate gunners down there. They used to shoot a flak at us, and they were they were pretty good. They now your bombers. Jacks. Did your bombers tend to to bomb land, or did you bomb ships, or? Well, we were after shipping and land. I see. Down in the Nauru, the they were there was a phosphate plant that phosphate mine down there and they wanted to put that out of commission because they yeah. use phosphate and a lot of ammunition. Oh, I see. And at, at that point in time, uh, you know, as, as I think of World War II history, uh, initially after uh, Pearl Harbor, certainly we were hunkering down and getting mm. into a defensive mode, but by 43, 44, we were, we were much more on the offensive and uh, I assume that you got involved with that, and it was more offensive with yeah. us, yeah. And some of the uh, what was known as island hopping. That's correct. Can you yeah. explain for uh, uh, for they everyone had, what uh, island hopping is? It was my, I guess it was MacArthur's idea to island island hop, not not go after each individual island all the way up to Japan, but but bypass an awful lot. In fact, there was a whole group of islands that they did pass bypass. I think it was the Carolines. Yeah, and uh, that's where we got involved dropping leaflets because on some of these islands they were still Japanese, mm -hmm. and of course we wanted them to surrender on the way up because we we're heading up to Japan. That's how we, we were have, dropping some of the leaflets. Yeah, we have a, a, a few things that uh, I think that uh, be interesting to show. Uh, the first uh, uh, picture that I have here is of of your uh, of your B twenty five. That's and, correct. And uh, uh, so people can get a, a, a feel for what, what that plane looked like. Uh, again, only a crew of six. That's a pretty small <laughs> crew when you think of some of the airplanes, yeah. uh, some of the big bombers. Well, it was have. quite a, a popular uh, airplane. Uh, many things. <laughs> I just, just got through reading a magazine about the B-25, and it said that it was the first airplane that uh, had that carried a cannon. It was the first airplane that took off the deck of a, a aircraft carrier. Oh, is that right? Yeah, the first airplane to bomb Japan. I'm not sure I'd want to be the first one taken off the, the, the very first one. Well, I'm not sure I'd want to be the last one either. Doolittle did it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, first airplane to bomb Japan. Mm -hmm. And I thought, also the first airplane to hit the Empire State Building. Oh, what? <laughs> That's right. Oh. 1945, a B-25 crashed into the Empire State Building. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, isn't that something? Well, uh, back to these leaflets. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe you can explain a little bit about uh, what the purpose of the leaflet drops were. Well, it was so uh, 
tell the Japanese uh, soldiers around these different islands that America was on the offensive now and we were on the way up to hit Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one you showed first was, mm -hmm. uh, it was also written in English. Right. And, uh, well, all they were supposed to do was when they picked up a leaflet is to bring it to the nearest commanding officer and hoping that the enemy... A commanding officer? A, of a, a Japanese of a, commanding officer. A Japanese oh, commanding yeah. officer. Because they were, they were He all may not have greeted that as well as uh, <laughs> you know, we would Trump. like. And then this, this is, or we have two other leaflets here that you've... Uh, well, this one here is... Uh, that one there I'm pointing at is uh, mm -hmm. the Okinawa one that uh, pointed to Japan is at, at midnight, at the 12 o'clock. That was the, supposed to be it. Okinawa was the 11 o'clock one and 12 o'clock for Japan. So this was a, this was a warning to, to, right, to yeah. these Japanese people that, uh, that it would be good if they think about uh, uh, capitulating. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to the island hopping a little bit. Uh, I've read a little bit about that because I think it's fascinating. Uh, you know, we've we've heard from a few of the other veterans about some of the some of the pretty awful experiences of places like Guadalcanal and certainly Iwo Jima, and uh, the island hopping and uh, quite uh, as you say, uh, MacArthur. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with probably with some of the other naval guys, uh, uh, really de devised that as a strategy. It allowed us to miss those some of those direct confrontations, which turned out to be. Uh, the most bloody experiences mm -hmm. of the war, yeah. since the Japanese didn't f feel like they would they would ever stop fighting until the last one was gone. That's right. And uh, that island hopping uh, uh, left a lot of cleanup to do afterwards too. After yeah. you go by bypass an island to go somewhere, and then uh, I I understand that uh, you'd get to another island that would be less inhabited, and and you'd make a an air base or, or an airfield so that you'd be able to, right. the whole idea was mm -hmm. we were marching towards Tokyo. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, uh, so some of these islands that you, uh, you, you spent time bombing were... were well, uh, we were looking for shipping and also shipping to do with supplies. There were mm -hmm. supplies the Japanese that were on these islands, like with food and stuff like that. And uh, also people and shipping and... Uh, Mm. Well, we strafe an awful lot of islands also. Yeah. It sounds, uh, I was reading in, in some of the material that you had that uh, in a period, in a short period, like between December and February of, uh, I think it was 44, or December of 43, or maybe 44 to 45, there were 18 of your, uh, of the B-25s were shot down. Uh, very possible. I, of course, that's from a group, yeah. not, not from a squadron, from a group. Yeah. Had it been a squadron, it would have wiped out the squadron. Well, that's still uh, yeah. obviously... But 18 uh, out of uh, 64, like you said, it's still quite a bit. That's they a, weren't all shot down in one raid, you know. They, right. They've been shot down in different raids. But I think the point is uh, yeah. that's a pretty risky business. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, uh, well, not only did they get shot down, but there was one... One raid, we were coming back from Kyushu, uh, that's the southern part of Japan, where uh, one of the planes crossed over into the other airplane and cut off the, uh, the pilot's plexiglass, and he couldn't see. And of course, they, oh, wow. the airplane went down, he couldn't steer it very much. So they all bailed out, and actually only three officers were saved. But I saw a lot of enlisted men, you know, I saw the shoots, but we never knew what happened to them after yeah. that. Now, your, uh, your group also, uh, during, the, during the war, were up into China, as I, as I understand. Yes, we bombed China. I, I'm not sure if people <laughs> realize that. Maybe you could explain a little bit about that and why we were bombing China. Well, I don't know why we were bombing China. We just did what we were told to do. <laughs> but... Uh, an odd thing about bombing China, they had Standard Oil had enough. They had a lot of refineries in Shanghai, and we were told not to touch that. Make sure you didn't the bombs. The Standard Oil That's Company right. yeah. it was mostly railroads and things like that. So it's things that were probably supplying well, materials for in, the Japanese. Japanese were in China at the time. Right, right. So, the, so even though we say it was China, we were oh, really yeah. going after Japanese. Was it Formosa? Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. So. Uh, uh, 
were you around when they when you uh, over there when they dropped the uh, the bombs over uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Well, I, we were on uh, station in Okinawa at the time. In Okinawa. Oh yeah. How yeah. far away is that from uh, Japan? Oh, maybe five or six hundred miles. Five or six hundred yeah. miles. You you couldn't see anything like the mushroom cloud. We did have a, well. I have a picture taken of it. One of the squadrons, we went up there, flew up there toward Japan and. Uh, he did take a picture of it. Really? I have a picture at home with a mushroom cloud, yeah. Wow. Mm. Boy, guard that one well. It was probably uh, many, many miles away, but it's still a picture. <laughs> oh, gee, that's, that had to be mm -hmm. quite an experience, uh, the thought of that. Well, uh, when did you finish up your tour in the service then? Uh, uh, in 1945, we were allowed to go home. We've had enough points you could get, go home. So we, uh, we had lost our ship on a typhoon, and we finally got another troop ship, and they, we went down to, they were gonna ship us back to California. And you were, you were in Okinawa at the time? Oh, yeah. that, that's where you was, you, you sort of had your home base that's after right. you'd been hopping around? Right. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we were supposed to go to California, but uh, halfway across, we found out it was, California was too full of people, you know, coming in by boat, getting mm -hmm. discharged at the time. So they shipped us up to uh, Washington State. So actually, we were on the we were on the ship for about thirty days altogether. Thirty days. Oh yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a long long Good time. Good thing they had food to supply us with. Yeah. And but we went up to Vancouver uh, Barracks, British Columbia. We got out of there. We hopped the train from there. We went to through Montana and South Carolina, Illinois, all the way across the United States. They got to Fort Devens. And uh, so you mustered out at, at Fort Evans. That's correct. Yeah. Well, when did you when did you meet Claire, your lovely wife Claire? Oh. <laughs> I'll have to tell you a story about that. That's my favorite story. And I don't. <laughs> I had a I had a blind date. She actually was a blind date. And I I always say that I opened the door and I saw her sitting in a chair and I said, Morgan. Your single days are over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a smooth talker, Morgan. <laughs> well, that's a great story. Yeah. Now, uh, what? How did you get to Hopkins when you came back and, and uh, met Claire? Uh, well, where we were you got, living? We got married. We lived mm -hmm. in Natick for a while. Then we, uh, the family started to get a little bigger, and we bought a house in Ashland. Mm -hmm. And as uh, the longer we got married, the more children came along, and we needed. Another bed, another couple of bedrooms. So we actually cleared in most of the work. She found the uh, the builder, and she found the street we wanted to live in. And uh, we had a four-room home built up there, four-bedroom home built on Whalen Road. On Whalen Road, and you've been there for over 40 years now. That's right. Uh, you mentioned to me a little bit earlier before we uh, uh, started our, our discussion that. Uh, uh, you're involved with a like an alumni group of uh, of your of your bomb group or your squadron. Can you can you explain a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, we. Uh, uh, I think I read in uh, the Legion magazine about uh, getting together with a bunch of people from the 820th Bomb Squadron, and I, I wrote to a fellow by the name of Bill Childs. I think it was, and he lived in Virginia, and he welcomed me and welcomed us into the group. And we had been going to reunions so for quite a number of years. And uh, finally, they were looking for uh, an area in New England to, uh, but they wanted someone to hold it. So uh, they selected, I don't think, I think they, we volunteered actually to hold it in Framingham. And uh, Claire and my daughter Allison did most of the work. I just sat back. You sat back. <laughs> huh? Now, how many? How many? Uh, how we many had about a hundred people to really? show up. Yeah. And these are all people who were. Well, with these you. are wives. These are wives yeah. and uh, people of the squadron. Wow, that's yeah. uh, that's fascinating. But uh, yeah. since the year 2000, it's been going down. And in fact, we haven't been to a, a reunion now in two years. The last one we had was in Charles, Charleston, South Carolina. But uh, people are getting too old, or they're dying off, and they can't get around anymore. And well, I think it's a uh, you know it certainly is uh, uh, a time, and you know most of us yeah. read, and I, I read the Legion magazine as well, and there are an awful lot of World War II people who uh, oh. Oh. aren't with us today that were with us just a year ago, yeah. and uh, uh, I think it uh, it makes this kind of a discussion even more important for us mm -hmm. to to right. hold and. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
uh, it's fascinating for the young children as yeah. well. And I know uh, uh, some of the kids are getting to look at, at some of the recordings that we do of conversations, and, mm -hmm. and they don't realize what grandpa or daddy did uh, uh, during the war because many didn't really talk too much about it. That's right. I, I think that uh, I know my, my family didn't realize what what I had been involved with. My old, my second daughter did. She was uh, Alice, and she was the one that put an awful lot of that stuff together in the calendar. And uh, she and Claire did an awful lot of work on it. And she didn't realize. She thought these uh, propaganda leaflets were fascinating. Yeah. And uh, they really didn't know too much about it. I never talked too much about it anyway. Well, it's been... Uh uh, it's been an enriching experience for me uh, talking with other uh, veterans mm -hmm. uh, as we're doing now and uh, uh, many of the families will come up afterwards and, and say boy that's really nice because they didn't really know that much about what dad did in the, yeah, in the yeah. war. So I think uh, I think that points out uh, exactly how important uh, uh, these conversations are and the fact that we're able to keep mm -hmm. this for uh, posterity as well. Uh, well, I was a little reluctant about doing this to begin with, but I was encouraged by my family to do it. Well, yeah. that's that's great, and I know yeah. Hank Alessio, who's and uh, he was involved, who's also. been involved with all of this right from the beginning, and whose brainchild this yeah. is, uh, uh, certainly appreciates that experience. Well, Morgan, I really appreciate you coming today and and telling us uh, uh, your experiences in the service, and I'd like to. Uh, once again, uh, uh, say thanks Morgan Malloy, uh, who served in the Army Air Corps and who's been a 40 year, at least a 40 years here in Hopkinton, and uh, uh, giving us your experiences for Veterans Remember. Uh, Veterans Remember uh, uh, is uh, our opportunity to learn a little bit about some of the military history and some of the residents of Hopkinton uh, who turn out to be real heroes and uh, uh, who have said very little, and Veterans Remember gives us the opportunity to be able to talk with those. Mm -hmm.